Today on The Grave Talks, we continue our conversation about the historic Wolf Hotel and what's below, a conversation with paranormal investigator and historian Amanda Coots. When Chris purchased this, this was completely empty. There was nothing here. It was falling in disrepair. This was completely empty. I just saw something back there go like this. Yep, I just saw it. It went. <laughs> so the other night, I so I have had paranormal activity in here as well a couple of times. The other night when I was doing paranormal tour, I told them I've never had any equipment go off in here. So we sat cat balls down and a cat ball went off in here. I was like, yay! That circle one, we were just standing there. Just going off and I was just like I'm so happy to see <laughs> because I, I don't I don't ever see any of my equipment go off here ever does the bartender ever have anything going because yes. I would assume after hours when he's and cleaning be- up and, and stuff. before yeah when you're setting up whenever he's kind of just you yes know, so just- same same bartender we only have a couple of them now um but I've had others tell me when they have bartended yes they have they've had stuff happen um one of the ladies she's not here anymore but she had something thrown at her she was looking in the uh, refrigerator the down below and she had something thrown at her and she turned around and looked and it was a a a dish rag or a sponge or something and nobody else was here it was just her Mm. and she was like how did i get that thrown at me i said i don't know they were just saying hey i'm here you know the train i it kind of adds in cool ambiance. What, the train? Yeah, because they say that limestone, which we've got, limestone. trains. Definitely as a conductor. Yeah, yes. and the water, yes. that, and with all the underground water here. Yep. So I had another gentleman on a paranormal tour, and he was right here, and he grabbed this book right here, and he put it on the table, and it's a little little history here, it says... And he's sitting here and just reading it. And um, it sounded like somebody threw pebbles at the window on the other side when he was standing here. Now, I thought he touched something because I saw him go like this. And I said, did you mess with something over here? And he goes, I was reading this. So, yeah, it did. It sounded like somebody threw pebbles right here. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a very distinct sound. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we have rocks that are like this big. You saw the rocks. Mm-hmm. We don't have pebbles. So I don't know what it, it like. Yeah. Like that. But it sounded more mm-hmm. like when you're throwing rocks out a window. That's what it sounded like. It was crazy. So, um, yeah, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I've had a couple more instances I'll tell you about. Um, we were sitting. Let's see. Let's do... Let's do this one first because it happened first. My boyfriend and I were sitting at one of these little tables, but it was over here. And um, bartender went to the back room there. We're on our phones and we hear, hello, hello, hello. Just like that. Very prominent. I thought the bartender was on his phone. He comes running out. He's like, did you guys just say something? And I looked up at him. I said, we thought you were on your phone. And he said, I don't have anything like that on my phone. He said, no, that wasn't me. And it was right there at the end of the bar. That's why I thought he was on his phone, because it was right there. Why wasn't I recording that? (laughs) But that's what happens when you're not expecting it at all. So... I'm going to tell you another instance, and I'm going to play my recording for you because I recorded it. So I'm going to play it for you so you can hear it. It is, it's cool. (laughs) I was sitting here. My boyfriend was sitting here. Same bartender. There were two people at the bar right here, and he's standing like this on the other side, and he's just looking at the door, and the door's closed, of course. And I look up, and he's looking at the door. So I go, and, you know, I'm sitting right here, you know, so I look at the door, and I see a shadow going like this in front of the door, just pacing. And I was like, hmm. So, you know, I'm back down on my phone. I'm just, you know, I look back up, and, of course, he's looking again. And I look, and, of course, I see again. 
shadow doing this. And I went like this to him. He goes, I know, I've seen it like five times. And I went, all right. So I grabbed my phone because this is all I have. My equipment wasn't with me. And he goes, go do your thing, girl, because he knew what I was getting ready to go do. So I'm going to let you listen to it in that room where I was sitting because it's noisy in here, but I want you to hear it. Okay. It actually sounds like somebody's kicking rocks as well. So I want you to listen to that. So follow me in here. Let's just. Yeah, it's too noisy in here. All the refrigerators. I see shadows through here a lot. A lot. I'm not surprised. I'm always like, what is that shadow doing? So I sat right here, sat my phone down, didn't move. This was March 1st. I said, I hear crap all the time. Is Baba here? I see somebody pacing in front of the door. I'm in at the underground, in the tunnels. Hear the ticking? Just outside the bar, the saloon. That's people in the bar. Is this a little girl? Here, hang on. I'll let you listen. It's right after I say, are you mad tonight? You can come and talk to me. I'm very easy to talk to. Are you mad tonight? Yeah, people in the bar. I may have come. So if I would have physically have heard that, I would have responded. Come and talk to me. I'm very easy to talk to. Are you mad tonight? Mm. Yeah, I played that back for him. When I came back in, he goes, so? And I played it back. He goes, oh! (laughs) I was like, yeah, that was here and here with me. Because you can tell they're talking in the other room. You can tell the difference. Uh That's why I was just like, oh, wow. Uh, And it's a woman's voice. Mm -hmm. So, and it's raspy. Too. I don't know if you could tell that or not. I was like, yeah, I'm like raspy. So I was like, okay, that's crazy. So <laughs> I, I let people listen to that because I'm like, I'm sitting right here. Yeah. Not doing anything. That's why I said it's not just there. It is right all through here. Mm-hmm. So um, since you're into the, the paranormal as well, I want to show you the boiler room. I want to take you in there, too, so you can see it. Um, Let me grab the key, because I want you to see the... I'm going to take you in the drummer's room and the boiler room, so you can see it. (laughs) So let me grab the key. Careful the floor here. It's full. So this would be the original floor. Yep, it's the original flooring. This is what we call the drummer's room. Sometimes when I come into this room, it's like kind of melancholy. It has a heaviness, heaviness to it. Yes, in here. absolutely. So that's why I'm, you know, when that's why I say when I bring paranormal people in here, they are only the ones that come in here, not people on history tours. Do you feel like a heaviness mm-hmm. in here? Like it's funny when we walked into the basement, the other place, I was like, whoo. it's more I didn't feel this right it's a different feeling it's a different feeling right Um, and on the other side I actually think that there's a big cowboy on the other side um, because I have seen a shadow that is like six seven feet tall in the doorways Mm. so I don't know who that is Um, my mom calls him Big John (laughs) but I like that Big uh, Bad John I was like okay well Big John that's that makes sense so I'm going to show you the picture I took. Okay, so if you see this picture, so they're in the barber shop. I always tell people, look right here. Mm-hmm. See it? Yeah. My boyfriend can't see it. 
It looks to me like a face. Mm-hmm. Well, it's definitely nothing it's else. Definitely, a hazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's definitely. But see, it looks like eye, eye, nose, mouth. That's what mm-hmm. it looks like. But yeah, picture. Hmm. So, and I told him, I was like, you can't see that? He was like, I don't know what you're looking at. I'm like, <laughs> how do you not see that? But everybody I've shown, they're like, oh, I see it. So I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one who sees that then, thank God. But So this is the boiler room. This is where that poor guy. This is the boiler room. See, it's a different feel in here. And nothing like a bunch of haunted dolls right. to really set the mood. <laughs> this is Kelly's. She also has a Dybbuk box. If you see the Dybbuk box up there. But I cleaned this out because this table was packed full of uh, Chris's items. So I cleaned this out. I told Chris I would like to do investigations back here. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he says, we can even get the table out. And he goes, oh, you probably want the table. I said, well, of course we want the table. I said, absolutely. Yeah, yeah set stuff on it. Yeah, we can set our equipment on it and stuff. So I said, absolutely, let's let's leave the table. So this is where I sit and we discuss things with Bubba and stuff. But here is my situation. I was told that Bubba, it was right here. Um, so see how dark it is in here? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being shot? in pain dragged in here in the dark absolutely horrible and i want to say i'm really sorry that happened to him. i am too that breaks i'm my extremely heart. sorry it happened to him it just breaks my heart to know that somebody that horrible would do something like that so he here, didn't deserve it no he did not he didn't deserve that at all i feel horrible for him um, so right back here is actually where the well is. See where the boards are over the top? Oh, uh-huh. That's where the well is. So, like I said, I want to know what this looked like when he was brought back mm-hmm. here. What did this look like? Horrible. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you, the boiler room, so you can get the feel of what yeah. it was like for him. Pretty, pretty horrible. I also truly believe that it's people's open-mindedness as well um, because if you're kind of closed mind you're not really going to have any kind of reaction I, I truly believe that if you are really open mind and say whatever happens happens you know let's go in here and maybe something will happen to us boom then something will because you're letting it in because if you're closed-minded, you're not letting anything right. in, and you're not even, you know, maybe you're expecting to see an apparition, but then when you don't, you're disappointed, and you're like, you they, they don't just jump at a snap of a finger. You know, I do not claim to be a medium at all. No. <laughs> a sensitive? Yes. Very sensitive to it. Mm-hmm. So... You know, I think I did catch it from my mom because, you know, it's definitely They say been it's generational. Out. A lot of people. And my I think my I don't know if it was my grandma or grandpa who said the same thing that they have felt, you know, something. I don't think it was my grandma. I think it was my grandpa who said that he has, you know, seen stuff. He was in World War Two. He saw a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's possible that he sure. had, mm-hmm. you know, sure. that maybe he did see the ghost of, you know, who he worked with and, you know, marched with or whatever. So. And don't you think, too, like Bubba, he didn't leave this world in a peaceful way. No, he he had no love around him. It was anxiety and fear and, you know, and his story's not been told. Correct. You know, you've got that tie still. And I'm a true believer of unfinished business. Mm-hmm. So I believe that if they're still still here, they have some kind of unfinished business that needs to be resolved before they can move on. Mm-hmm. And nobody has finished um, his story. Mm-hmm. So I believe that's why he hangs around. Maybe they just like it. Maybe they're just happy. Yeah. But... 
um, I have caught responses as you see my cat balls going off. So I have caught responses because I said maybe they're happy, you know, to see us tonight and the ball just went off. Hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe he was just, you know, happy that we're there and we're talking and you know, well, he's got company. <laughs> and white people didn't talk to him yeah. as a person. Maybe. You know, he wasn't treated he was respectfully. Yeah. And Maybe he was ignored in life. And, yeah. You know, now people are like, oh, hey, what, Bubba, what's going on? You know? Yeah. So we talk to him all the time now. So it seems... That's good. Yeah. It seems like he's pretty content, you know, with us hanging around and stuff. Uh, that's why I say I don't feel, you know, you don't feel any ill will at all. I mean, I just feel like it's kind of somber. Yeah. Yeah, this this has a real heaviness to it in here. It does, yeah. I've also had a medium in here tell me that she has seen something dark. She thinks there's like a black blobish looking thing in here. She cannot describe it. And it's in this corner. Mm. So she doesn't know where it comes from. And I said, so it's not Bubba. She goes, no. I said, it's not the little girl. She says, no. And I've asked, how many are in this room on my spirit box? And I have got six. And I'm just like, okay, six. All right. I've had eight been said here, too. But there could be eight. Could Could be be six. There There could be be one. Yeah. Just depends on the day. That's why I tell people it's not just her. There's other things here. There's something. So when I bring people on my history tours into the library, I actually keep it dark so they can feel the natural light that comes through on the other side of the storefront. Mm-hmm. That way they can get that feel. Yeah. Because like, this so cool. makes more sense as a storefront with that, the daylight coming in. Yep. Right now across the street, that was dark, dark. down there. It is very dark, yes. yes. But it's funny, even as dark as that was, I didn't feel the Not like heaviness that I feel in this room. Yes, and I didn't feel that out there. Right. Or over there. Right. This is a completely different feeling mm-hmm. here. Yeah. So I'm going to take you into the library so you can see what that looks like. And like I said, I keep the light off so you guys can have that feel, you know, on the other side of a storefront. Now, when this is off. Yeah, this would be dark. Oh, it's dark. I, I was going to tell you another story in here. Um, Remember, I was like, the dark doesn't scare you, does it? I'm not, no. <laughs> I was like, I, I do this stuff all the time. See how dark it is in here? Yeah. Yeah, it's dark. So, Especially if that door was, if the doors were closed, it would be dark. dark. And it, it, when, it's, when there's no uh, light coming through there, yeah, it is. So I was here with the, um, with the manager, the, or the um, office manager, we were stocking the bathroom and for some reason this was open and she said she could barely see the doorway um, when she came in here because when those lights are off you can't you can hardly see the doorway she said she came over and she goes why is this door open so she went to go shut it well I told her I was like well I gotta go to the bathroom and she goes okay go ahead so I went to the bathroom and she went upstairs to grab some supplies for here Uh, A couple months later, you know, we get everything done here, and I walk out, and I hear a noise. And I'm like, what's going on out here? So I look out, and all the tunnel lights are on. (laughs) And I, I, I came up to her, and I said, did you turn the tunnel lights on? She was like, no. I said, the tunnel lights are on. And she said, how are they on? I said, I don't know. I came out here and they were all turned on. And she was like, um, hmm. She, we were, it was within like five minutes. There's no possible way. Wow. There's no way. Because she went upstairs. I went to the bathroom. There's Boom. nobody else. Yeah. And she said, you couldn't even see the door when she went to go shut the door. You couldn't even see it. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm huh. still, I'm still baffled. I, I don't get it, but we always see shadows. Um, so we always see shadows right here 
right in this area, and she saw something go like like this, like a hand. Oh, mm. like this when we were we were standing over there, and she said, "What was that?" And I said, "What?" And she said, "I saw a hand do this, and then gone." And I said, mm. "I." We see stuff all the time. The bartender sees a shadow go like this all through there. Mm. All the time. So that's why I said before before he opens, after he closes. Oh, I bet. He always sees, mm-hmm. sees stuff. So I'm always asking him, are you happy that we are, you know, have people down here drinking? You know, maybe you're drinking with us. <laughs> You know, I always ask them, you know, come have a drink with us and stuff like that. I'll, we'll sit down at the chair and I'm like, come on, it's it's bar time and just to see if we get anything. But yeah, it's insane sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, what was that? <laughs> you know? So here's the library. Um, we went ahead and dedicated the library to Beth. So we put in, as you can see, the shelves right here. Um, there were still probably some books down here when it was a library. This is also books from where people have donated over the years as well. And we also have library cards on the back wall here from the 40s and 50s. So, yeah. I always say people from Ellen would love to find their relatives, you know, yes. until we send out past due balances. And they're not too happy about it. That's awesome. But, so then, now I'm going to take you guys upstairs to the room. So I'm going to show you the hotel room. Okay. Okay, so at that point, we went up to look at the rooms in the hotel. My sister Kathy is with me. When we got home, I went to download everything from my recorder, and I have zero from the rooms upstairs. <laughs> so we really did go upstairs in this hotel. So I brought yes, Kathy on to, to talk about that with me. It was weird because right before we went upstairs, I said, I want to change the batteries in my recorder. I did. So I know I was assuming I would be recording upstairs. And honest to God, I really thought I did, mm-hmm. which is weird. So I get home. Everything's fine with my recorder. It turns on fine. It records fine. The batteries are juiced up. We just got no audio from upstairs. So there's a couple things here. It could have been me just forgetting to hit record. I mean, I'm not going to put that past me, (laughs) but we did drive all that way to record. Um, But then, you know, here's the other thing. A lot of times you hear of electronics and things just not working properly in a haunted environment. I don't know. Right. So. So we go upstairs at the hotel, and there's five rooms. I do have to say one thing before we get upstairs. Um, When you turn to go up the stairs, it's very surprising in that hotel because you think you're just – the way you enter the stairwell thing, you think you're just going to turn and go up some kind of narrow stairs, but it's this big, wide, huge staircase that you're not expecting. And I found it kind of creepy. Like 20 feet wide, probably? Oh, I'd say at least, yeah. And it was the last thing I expected and sort of creepy. Like as I walked up those stairs, I kind of felt like those creepy eyes watching me. Yeah, it was weird. It was definitely unexpected because I think Mm -hmm. you and I both actually reacted to it. Yeah. And so we get up the stairs and I didn't have too much as far as like getting the creeps or anything. It's like, oh, nice room, nice room, nice room. Except we walked into one room they call Grandma's room. Mm -hmm. And it is a room that has a lot of little knick-knacky things in it, like Grandma's room. Oddly, like you walk into this room, and it sort of has like French doors that open into the room, I believe, didn't it? Because it was kind of like bigger doors going in. Might have. I don't remember. And then it has like this bed. And then on the opposite wall, it just is shelves, like all these shelves with all of these antique knickknack types of things. And the weird thing is when we walked into that room, I had a physical reaction to it. I said out loud immediately, I'm like, no, 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 no. There was something in that room. And the other weird thing in there was it was cold. It was. It was appreciably colder. Now, can we blame that on 
weird air conditioning that m- makes that room colder than another room. I, I don't know, maybe, but it, it definitely was colder. And we mentioned that and the girl said, yeah, it, it's always colder in this room. Um, she also was able to pull out her phone and show us some kind of strange uh, shadow type. Yeah, thing. so it was this video shot with an XLR camera. So you kind of mm-hmm. see the stick figure. And was mm-hmm. it laying on the bed or sitting on the bed? Yeah, I believe it was cast on the bed. Because her and her that daughter and her boyfriend spent the night there one night. Mm-hmm. And the daughter was like, Mom, why are you recording me? And she's like, I'm recording <laughs> whenever I'm sitting on the bed behind you. <laughs> so she said there's lots of reports of activity in that room. So we weren't the only ones. The- I would have to say that I I think... Any of those rooms, if you stayed the night, would be creepy in yeah. the night. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. You know, I th- we we felt it in that one room especially, but I had the feeling that anywhere I would have stayed would have given me the creeps at night. It was funny because there were several places you and I both had the same weird reactions. And the first mm-hmm. one was in the the tunnels across the street from the hotel when we went down into that man's tax shop or whatever that was, Mm -hmm. both you and I were like, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's something in here. And we we went into some creepy places on this tour because you're underground, but Mm -hmm. not all of them gave me that same creepy feeling. And then we both felt it in, there's a well room that that you heard us talking about. Both you and I Mm -hmm. very much reacted to that room in that area. But mm-hmm. I think the weirdest thing of all was we got home that night and we were both taking pictures and we're like, oh, let's see if we got any great pictures. So I'm looking at my pictures and then Kathy's looking at hers and she's like, what the F? I think that isn't exactly what you said, but <laughs> I'm just being nice and polite. <laughs> but you got this really creepy, creepy photo. Yeah, I did. You can see a figure, but the, there's a face. There's a it. face, and in, in what's crazy— It's a creepy face. What's crazy like a is scary one. a lot of times when people go, oh, I got this, this apparition, and then you have to kind of, mm, I'm sort of seeing it, and they're like, look, here's the eyes and the nose. This one is not like that. It's like it's a woman in a black dress. And everybody looks at it and goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was so creepy. And so I took, it was in the, there's a bar in the below that we talk about in the episode. So it was in there in the speakeasy, super cool space, by the way, like a really fun place to go for drinks. Like weekends. Yeah. Fridays and Saturdays, seven to 10. It's a little town. They they don't go, is it, you know, they don't go late at night. I think if it's really hopping, they might go to, to 11. Yeah, it's it it reasonable hours. But the crazy thing is, is I stepped back and I took a picture. And so on one side of the room, there's like a walkway, but there's a, a wall that has four windows. So you can see the walkway part of the tunnel mm-hmm. behind, behind this wall. Behind this speakeasy yeah. bar. So there's four windows. I took a picture that shows all four windows. So Kathy's picture is in one of those windows, and we probably took our pictures about the same time, very close. I'd say 20, 30 seconds apart. And my my picture, there is one of the windows when you look in, you definitely see something dark. Mm -hmm. But Kathy's was really like, holy shit, kind of. Well, mine has a head. Yeah. For one thing, and a face. And a dress. And then Amanda said she thought it might be the reflection of a mannequin, but I don't ever remember seeing a mannequin. And even if it was a reflection of a mannequin, the mannequin didn't look anything like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, this was, yeah. No, I I would have noticed that mannequin. (laughs) I know, we would have seen it. And and you don't see it in my pictures. It would have shown up better in the picture. Yeah, you don't see anything. This is like an apparition picture. Yeah. 
Because I took a picture of all the four windows. I took a picture of the bar. So I have some kind of good pictures of the area. There's no mannequin there that Mm -hmm. I saw. So I don't know what it was you captured, but it's also where you hear in the episode, we're down there and she's talking about going to the bathroom and and the lights all turn in on in the tunnel Mm -hmm. when she was in there. And how they report seeing dark figure in that corner. It was really close to that area. I'd say within yeah, it's the area that within they said twenty they feet. See a there. lot of that people see this dark this dark figure walking past these windows because it's weird. You can be in this little speakeasy and look out these windows mm-hmm. into uh, like a hallway thing behind the windows because it's all underground under in this tunnel area and. They said that people say they see this dark shadow that walks across there. Well, I caught a dark shadow walking across Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I caught. Only mine has a face on it. And and in my pictures of the four windows, there's definitely this dark mass thing. But yours is so much more defined. So it's really interesting. We should post that on the Grave Talks page. Yeah, we can do that. So people can see that because it was really... It was really interesting. So it was a fun little day trip there. I would highly recommend it to anyone. It was very historical, Mm -hmm. haunted, creepy. And I believe that they also own a a place. Is it in Lyons, Kansas? Where did you say it was? There's another place in Ellenwood that's right down the street. And it was a former jail convent or something like that. Okay. But there was another one that's a jail, and I believe it might be in another yeah. town. Yeah, so they have there. a jail as well. So we're going to go back for another trip. I mean, why wouldn't yeah. we? Right. We made an a friend. We made a new friend, Amanda. Yeah. But if you're ever in the middle of Kansas and you're like, I would like to go through that, set that up in advance, mm-hmm. and Amanda will take you on the tour. Or they do them regularly. I think in the weekends, on the weekends mm-hmm. and the evenings. But it was really dollars cool. US, well worth it. Mm-hmm. That's all we paid for that whole tour was sixteen bucks each, and, and that was three hours long. Every bit of three hours. We tipped her on top of it though, because yeah. she gave us but, a lot of her time. But it was full three hours. We were there. Yeah, yeah. So it was a really really fun trip. So I just wanted to bring Kathy on to kind of wrap up the episode since it ended with, and now we're going to go upstairs. <laughs> And, and we did. We, we did. Went upstairs. But for some reason, so I don't know if it was, it could have been me just not turning on my recorder, which is kind of weird since I had just changed the batteries to make sure I could record upstairs. I don't yeah. know. And and I recommend, like, Amanda was really good at giving us both the ghost slash history tour because there's a lot of interesting history that I think really is part of the whole ambiance of the tour that, you know, there was a bank and there was embezzlement and, you know, all this the stuff that happened. And then there was this suicide in the dining room. You know, there was all these things that happened um, that I think just play into the narrative of the paranormal in this hotel. And you did not hear the whole tour in this episode. I took huge time there are two hours that aren't in in this episode so yeah so, just know you did so you not hear go. you did we not won't hear tell everything. you we yeah. won't tell you everything yeah but you you should go it was pretty awesome so thank you very much kathy i appreciate you being on and kind of helping me wrap up that episode no problem and that wraps up our conversation with amanda coots about the historic Wolf Hotel and the tunnels below. For more information on the hotel, visit thehistoricwolfhotel.com. If you'd like access to all of our episodes, including the archive and advance episodes, everything commercial free, you could become a gravekeeper. Sign up on Apple Podcasts where you can try it for three days free, or you could also go to patreon.com slash thegravetalks. I'm Carol Hughes, and for all of us here at The Grave Talks, thank you so much for listening.